Okay, so our brand new unit is on trigonometry, um, which we abbreviate to trig. In the last unit, remember how we did indirect measurement where we use like shadow and shadow and height and height? Trig's gonna help us do the same thing. So part of the project that we're gonna do once we get back from break is we're gonna go out and measure the height of the new building or measure the height of a lamp post, or measure the height of the J building without using a ladder and a tape measure. That would be a long tape measure. Okay, so we're gonna use indirect measurement to some extent um, to solve, but we're also gonna use trig. Okay, so first let's start by drawing a right triangle. So for trig, all of our triangles must be right triangles. If you don't have a right triangle, you can cannot use trig, okay? If you don't have a right triangle, you cannot use trig. Now, what would we name this side of a right triangle? The hypotenuse, that's the name that we've known for a while, right? So this is the hypotenuse. And we know it's the hypotenuse, why? It's the longest side, why else? It's what? It's slanted, okay, why else? So the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, always. Okay, so your hypotenuse is always directly across from the right angle. Does anyone remember what we would call these sides? Legs. Yep. We are going to be using um, our calculators. You have to have a calculator for this unit. So if you don't have a calculator, I need you to take a se second and I need you to come grab one because you have to have a calculator to do this and you wanna make sure you know how to use the calculator. So if you don't have a calculator, come grab one. There are three buttons on your calculator that we're gonna use often. Um, the first one is sign and it's abbreviated S-I-N. Do you see that on your calculator? So the first button is sign or S-I-N. Our second button we're gonna use is cosine, which is abbreviated C-O-S. And our last one is tangent, which is abbreviated T-A-N. So I want you to locate those three buttons on your calculator. For everyone that has this calculator, they're pretty obvious. They're kind of like right in the center of all the top buttons. Everyone have them located on their calculator? Anyone not see them? Okay. In this unit, we're gonna look at a reference angle. And so when I talk about a reference angle, um, it's the angle we start at. Okay, so we're gonna start just for uh, time being, we're gonna start at this angle here. Okay, so angle A is gonna be our reference angle. You may wanna use different colors because I eventually will. So angle A is my reference angle. The side across from angle A, we're gonna call the opposite side. That makes sense, right? If it's across from it, it's opposite of it. Do you agree with that? Yeah? So the side across from angle A, we're gonna call the opposite side. If A is my reference angle, Anyone know a math term we can use for something right next to? Touches, right next to? Adjacent, nice. So the side right next to angle A is adjacent and the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so across from angle A is the opposite. Right next to angle A is the adjacent, and then the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. 
but what if my reference angle was angle C? So here's where I'm using another color. I know you can't see, so I use purple for these. I'm using black here. What if my reference angle is angle C? What would the side across now be called? What do you think? If my reference angle is C, what's the side across from it gonna be? The opposite. And the side next to it would be the adjacent. So the opposite and the adjacent sides are going to be determined based off your reference angle. Okay, we'll look more at this in a second. So, but again, the opposite and the adjacent sides are gonna be determined based off your reference angle. Questions so far? We're okay? Okay, so when we're looking for sine, we are gonna use the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if we're gonna find sine, and we're gonna practice these, we're gonna do the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Still good? Okay. I'm going to give you an acronym for sine, cosine, and tangent because I don't, I think it's going to be a little harder to remember, okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That seems a little harder to memorize. Agree? Okay, so what if I give you, and some of you may have heard it before. I'm going to give you Sokotoa. Sokotoa. So write down Sokotoa. Don't look at me crazy. Just write it down. Sokotoa. And look how nice this works for us. S stands for sine. And the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's what I told you up here. So all you have to remember is Sokotoa and then all the letters fall into place. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Do you see that? I guarantee you're gonna remember Sokotoa rather than all of these ratios. Okay, Sokoto is our main thing. At the top of all of your papers for the next three weeks, you're gonna write Sokotoa and I promise you that's gonna help. Everyone with me still? Okay. We are going to write each trig ratio. What's a ratio? What's a ratio? A fraction. What's the definition of a ratio? Who remembers? Something to something. Okay. Can we add to that? So the actual definition is a comparison of values. Does that sound familiar from a couple units ago? But we write it as a fraction or something to something. Okay, so we're going to write each trig ratio as a fraction. and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. Oh look, what we did in our warm up. So we're gonna write each trig ratio as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. So let's draw this right triangle.
and we're going to answer three questions. I want to find the sine of angle R. I want to find the cosine of R. And I want to find the tangent of R. I'm going to do this together. So that's what we're looking for. The sine of R, the cosine of R, and the tangent of R. Back when we were doing uh, distance formula and midpoint formula, what was the very first thing I asked you to do before you started plugging stuff in? Label, okay? Um, until you are really, really good at this, I expect to see you label your sides because if you don't, that's where you're gonna mess up. Okay, so we're gonna label all of our signs, sides, hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. When I say label, we're labeling hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Now, if I look at these three questions, what angle am I starting at, do you think? What angle am I starting at for all three of these? R. So R is my reference angle. I label everything based off angle R. Okay, I'm labeling everything based off angle R. So what would TS be based off angle R? Opposite. And we can just do OPP, or you can write opposite, you do you. The next easy one is probably the hypotenuse. Which one's that going to be? RS, because it's across from the 90 degree angle, which means my last one or the one right next to angle R is the adjacent. So when I say label your triangle, this is what I'm talking about. Opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Still with me? Okay. So let's find the sine of angle R. So if I go back up to Sokotoa, what two pieces do I need for sine? Opposite and hypotenuse. And we're writing it as a fraction. So opposite is 12. The hypotenuse is 13 because we already have it labeled. So that's my ratio. Can I reduce it? Because I should if I could. No? And then what is that rounded to the nearest hundredth? Everyone get 0 0.92? Okay. Now the ka, so ka toa. What do I need for this cosine? Adjacent and hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent piece? Five and the hypotenuse? Thirteen. Can I reduce that at all? Nope. What is it as a decimal? Round it to the nearest hundredth. Zero point three eight. Okay. So soka and then we're on toa. What do I need for tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is 12. The adjacent is 5. It can stay as an improper fraction. Don't make it a mixed number. Reduce if you can. In this case, we can't. What do you get rounded to the nearest hundredth? 2.40 technically. Eventually, we're going to solve for side lengths. Right now, we're practicing this setup. Everyone okay with that? So if I give you one, you can do it? Yeah. Awesome. So you and your group find the following. Make sure you label your sides and then find the ratio and round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, first things first. What is my reference angle? B. B? Okay, so if I have B as my reference angle, what is CA? Opposite. Opposite. Your paper should have these labels. Across from the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. Next to 
is the adjacent. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Sine uses what two sides? The so. Opposite and hypotenuse. So the opposite is 24. The hypotenuse is 25. That doesn't reduce, and you should have gotten 0 0.96. So far, so good? Did you notice your reference angle changed for this part? Okay, I'm gonna skip two and go to three because I have B as my reference angle still. What do I need for tangent? Opposite and adjacent. So the opposite is 24, the adjacent is seven. You should end up with 3.43. .3. So good? Okay, my reference angle changes which means now across from the A is the opposite. Right next to the A is the adjacent and the hypotenuse stays the same. What do I need for cosine? Adjacent, which is now 24, and the hypotenuse, which is 25. Did you get 0 0.96? You didn't let that trick you? Awesome. Okay, so your reference angle could change within, like if I give you one triangle and multiple problems, your reference angle may change. So just remember to look at what angle you're looking at. We okay with that? Great. Let's learn how to use our calculator. Yes. Okay. Stand by. Here we go. We are going to... So use your calculator. To find each trig ratio. Round to the nearest hundredth. And we're going to find the cosine of 76. The cosine of 76. You're going to need your calculator. If you don't have a calculator, we have to use something called the trig table, and it is a pain in the butt and a lot of work, and I don't think you want to have to deal with multiplication and division and all that stuff with big decimals, right? Okay, so on your calculator, for today, it's pretty straightforward. We're literally typing in the cosine of 76. So find the cosine button on your calculator and then type in 76. You should get 0 0.24. Type it in and make sure because some of you might be set to the wrong mode. But you should get 0 0.24. Did you get that? If you didn't get 0 0.24, let me know so I can change your mode. If you didn't get 0 0.24, okay, let me pause this for a second. It is 0 0.24. I would like you to find the sine of 8. Find the sine of 8. Rounded to the nearest hundredth, what did we get? 0 0.14. Okay. Um, what about the tangent of 82? The tangent of 82. What did you get? 7.12. Okay. 